The call of the north has become impossible to ignore for me. As I'm editing this video, I realized that 10 months have passed since I started filming this footage. And as of today, we're still in the north. A place where the beauty of the rugged landscape takes your breath away. Each episode of Call of the North will be a new adventure and I'm so excited to share it with you. The days of leaving are always the weirdest. You feel all the potential that a strip might hold, all the preparation that has gone into it, mixed with feelings of things you might forget, who you might gonna meet, and all the unexpected situations that you will encounter. It always takes a few nights until our van starts to feel like home again. First off, we drove straight to Germany, stopped on the Baltic Sea for a little walk and took the ferry to Sweden to meet up with our friends in the south. And a couple of days fast forward, we arrived in the south of Norway. Usually I go on little trips. I'm never able to fully settle down and feel ease. Because I always think that a trip is coming to an end. But living in a van so far, I suddenly got this feeling of peace. Because I got my home with me all the time. It's the first trip for us without a destination that doesn't have a schedule or real expectations. Obviously, we have a general route of where we're going, but in the end, we just go wherever we feel like at the end of the day. Many fjells in the south still carried snow, as we were quite early in the season, and although sun was shining, temperatures were really cold. But that didn't stop me from taking my first guinea dip of the season. And let me tell you, dipping into this snow-fed lake was brutally cold, but a shower was well needed after a couple of days on the road. At the lake we met up with Annie and Matthias, friends from Germany that will join us for the next weeks. We enjoyed the evening sun on the beautiful shore of this lake, and this place was just a dream to stay. There was no one else around us, and there was only silence and peace. We headed further into the fjords and packed our bags. It was time for our first overnight trip of the season. I was pretty stoked to go to this place again, as I've been there in 2018. Back then I had the most beautiful conditions that I could imagine, and so the expectations were quite high this time. With a stop at Gerak Bolton, we quickly found a nice campsite to pitch our base camp. Next to an unbelievable thousand meter drop, we had food and waited for the light to get better. As the sun got lower, I went to the place that I took one of my favorite photos in 2018. With the sun at the lowest, the light cut through the landscape in a warm golden tone. The waterfall at the opposite side of the valley started to glow like fire with glimmers of gold from the spray, gently floating down the fjord. 
It was like fire falling down the valley. After a good night's sleep, we walk up surrounded by clouds. Later the layer of clouds moved below our camp spot and we packed our gear together and went back to the vans. With beautiful weather, we drove further through the deep fjords of Norway, slowly making our way north. In between we always went for a hike to beautiful glacial lakes and high mountain ridges with deep views into the valleys. The landscape changed, slowly but steadily on our way north. From deep fjords and rich forests to more open spaces and flat hills with lush fields. With sometimes some big fellows enjoying a bite from the bush. This time was mainly shaped by lots of kilometers driving. Many coffees, good food, dips in the freezing ocean, and many sunsets along the coast. Past the Arctic Circle, the landscape changed drastically. 
Snow covered all the peaks and the weather turned remarkably colder. We made our way to Bodø, ready to set over to the Lofoten Islands. And so much I can already tell you, we fell in love with the area once again, but it will be part of another episode.